So in this video, I'm going to be doing the 100 hour service on my DVO Onyx single crown D1 fork. DVO recommends doing this service once a year or every 100 hours of riding. While reviewing the DVO service manual for doing this process, I noticed it was over 100 steps long. There are some things left out of it, so I contacted DVO to get clarification and decided to make this video so it'll help the next person that has to perform this service. All tools used throughout the video will be listed in the descriptions down below as well as the parts that I ordered from DVO to perform this service. Please make sure to like and subscribe to the video if it was helpful to you and comment any additional questions you have down below. So I'm gonna be using some seven and a half weight Spectro Golden Oil, some two and a half weight Spectro Golden Shock Oil. You're also gonna to wanna to use some marine grease. DVO is gonna to recommend to use maximum marine grease. I just had this one around, some suspension cleaner. Then you're gonna to want to get a tub of slick oleum. You're gonna use this throughout the steps quite a bit a bleed cup that you can order through DVO or there's some hacks online, a 32 millimeter chamfered socket. That'll just help remove those top caps without marring. You're gonna want a 36 millimeter wiper sill install tool, some 242 blue Loctite. It would be helpful, but you can get around without using these, but some vice clamps. And then from DVO, you're gonna need a new air piston the new wiper seals, a damper side stanchion plug, a new bladder unit boot assembly, but there's a chance you might not need to replace that in your case. And I got a new travel indicator o-ring just cause it was a dollar. Now dismount that fork and let's get started. We're gonna start by using a two millimeter Allen key to remove the compression adjuster. Just go ahead and unthread that screw, set it to the side, and then pull that entire compression adjuster up and off. It's all in one piece on the Onyx design. Now you can remove the air cap and very important in this step, make sure to use an Allen key to release all the air from the air chamber. You don't want any air in there for the next steps. And then you can use your 32 millimeter chamfered socket to remove the bladder compression unit. Just pull that straight out and set it to the side. And now we can use that same 32 millimeter socket to remove the air side cap as well. Once those are both removed, go ahead and take the fork and drain the oil into a catch can. Now that the oil is drained, grab an 18 millimeter socket and you want to loosen both of the foot nuts. You don't need to completely remove them yet, just loosen them just enough so that you leave yourself about a two millimeter gap between the foot nuts and the lowers. And then go ahead and give them a soft hit with a rubber plastic mallet. This will free the uppers from the casting. And then you can go ahead and remove both the rebound foot nut and the OTT foot nut. Carefully drain out the oil and then you can remove the lowers from the upper assembly. Now that the lowers are removed, go ahead and grab your pin spanners and you wanna insert those into your OTT stanchion plug and break that free. This is Loctited into place so it may not come out as easily. If it doesn't come out easily, go ahead and use uh, heat for about 10 to 15 seconds around the perimeter like you'll see me do on the damper side. This has probably never been removed so this one required a little more effort but as soon as you soften up that Loctite, it will break free. And once you get that all unthreaded, go ahead and pull out your damper unit and set it to the side. Now you wanna push your air piston out of the top assembly. Just grab something long enough and then just put it in the air side and carefully push downward, releasing the air piston. Now you wanna completely clean your stanchion tubes out. Just use some suspension cleaner and spray into both sides and then feed some clean shop towels through. You can use the same tool you used to push the air piston out. Once those are both clean, now would be a good time to replace that O-ring. Go ahead and just slide the O-ring off and then install your brand new O-ring. I like to keep this in place during the whole process as it helps determine which side is the air side. Now that the stanches are clean, go ahead and grab your brand new air piston and you wanna apply a little bit of slick oleum to the air side inner stanchion and then also on the outside of the new air piston. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you insert this with the dome piece facing upwards towards the top of the crown and then go ahead and just slide that into place. Now we can move on to the damper assembly. You wanna clamp the damper assembly in the 20 millimeter part of your vice clamps in this orientation here. You're gonna use a wrench to secure the lower portion and then your pin spanners in the stanchion plug and using opposite forces, break that free. And once that is loose, you can remove your rebound shaft. Now that the rebound shaft is removed, go ahead and clamp it in the 10 millimeter part on your vice clamps in this orientation. And you wanna remove that end plug. This is Loctited into place and you'll likely need to use about 10 to 15 seconds of heat around the perimeter evenly, in which case it'll soften up that Loctite and allow you to break that end plug free from the rebound shaft. Once you have that out, go ahead and set that to the side. Now that that end plug is removed and out of the way, you can grab your stanchion plug and slide it off of the rebound shaft. 
It is recommended by DVO that you replace the rebound stanchion plug with a brand new unit. You're going to want to take it out of the package, apply a bit of grease to the O-ring, a little bit of grease on the rebound shaft, and then slide it into place. It should move pretty easily. If you decide not to replace your damper stanchion plug, you want to at least remove the inner O-ring of your stanchion plug and re-grease that and put it back into place. It is a little finicky to get it back in the inner groove. I used a golf tee and it helped me to seat it properly. Then apply a little bit of grease to the outer O-ring as well and reinstall it on the rebound shaft. Now grab the end plug that you set aside, remove the O-ring from it, apply a little bit of grease to it and reinstall it all the way back down into the groove. And then once that's done, you wanna clean the threads off as we are going to add a little bit of Loctite to this and reinstall it back onto the rebound shaft. You don't want to over tighten it, just make sure that you secure it and snug it to that rebound shaft. Now you can remove that rebound shaft from the vise, apply a small amount of Loctite to the smaller threads of the stanchion plug, reinsert it into the cartridge body, and screw it all the way down till it's flush, again using a wrench to secure the cartridge body and the pin spanners and opposite forces to snug it in place. Now you can apply a small amount of slick oleum to the damper side stanchion tube, and then you want to clean those threads and then remove the rebound damper assembly from the vise, apply a small amount of slick oleum to the O-ring on the end, and then a small amount of Loctite to the stanchion plug end. Go ahead and insert that into the damper side, and then screw it all the way down using your pin spanners to just snug it in place. Now that you're done with the damper side, grab the OTT assembly and clean it with some suspension cleaner and some shop towels. Get it nice and clean and then place it in this orientation and pull downward on the spring to dislodge it from the barrel. You're going to grab that black C-clip on the top and use a pick to remove it. Then you're going to remove the metal washer that's right below it. Then the plastic washer, keeping everything in the same orientation to make install easier. And then grab that top of barrel O-ring and set that aside as well. Now you can grip the barrel end and using a four millimeter Allen key inserted all the way in, turn that counterclockwise completely until that barrel comes off of the end. It is important to make sure that you turn the Allen key and not the barrel. Once that's off, you can remove that inner barrel O-ring. It could be stuck inside the barrel, so check there. Once that's removed, just give everything one last wipe down. Now that the OTT is nice and clean, grab your slick oleum and apply a small amount to the inner barrel O-ring. That is the thicker of the two. And then go ahead and slide that down back on top of that black collar piece. And then apply a generous amount of slick oleum to the threads. Once that's done, you can reinsert the barrel, holding it with your right hand. And again, inserting that four millimeter Allen key into the bottom and this time turning it clockwise to fully seat the barrel. Once you get the barrel to the top of that black collar piece, you'll notice that black collar piece has a profile to it that matches the inner profile of that barrel. It is not circular. You want to make sure you line those up with one hand and then once you get that shape lined up, everything should just thread down nice and easy and just keep turning clockwise so that barrel is fully seated. Now that the barrel is fully seated, go ahead and grab that o-ring that goes on top of the barrel, apply a small amount of slick oleum and place it back on top of that barrel. You can then reinstall that plastic washer making sure that dome shape points up, then reinstall the metal washer, and then finally take that black C-clip and put that back into the groove just above the metal washer. You're gonna to wanna to use a pair of needle nose pliers putting one end inside of the hole on top and just to secure it while you snap it into place. Now that that's done, go ahead and take your OTT assembly and flip it over and snap that spring back onto the barrel. You should hear a pretty definitive click when it snaps into place. If you want to adjust the travel, this would be the time to do it. Go ahead and pull that spring back off of the barrel, exposing the area where you would add or remove the travel reducers. Each reducer limits the travel by 10 millimeters. The Onyx is capable of 180 millimeters of travel. As you can see, I'm running mine at 160 as I'm using two of these spacers. If you remove all the spacers, your fork will be at the stock 180 millimeters of travel but if you decide that you want to run a different travel this is where you would add the spacers again each one reduces by 10 millimeters the spacers simply just snap on with that ridge facing the top out spring once you've added or removed the spacers go ahead and just slide the top out spring into place either against the spacers or all the way up against the green collar making sure everything is flush and snap the spring back into place and make sure it's secure now that the OTT is completely assembled you're going to want to grab some marine grease DVO recommends using Maxima waterproof grease I actually had some marine grease laying around. I think the whole point they went with this thicker grease instead of using slick oleum is to keep the oil that you put in the lowers from mixing in with the thinner grease. So this thicker grease probably just helps keep it separated. Make sure to cover the entire spring with this marine grease. Now that the OTT is greased, go ahead and clean the threads on the stanchion of the air side. And then you want to apply a small amount of Loctite to the threads of the stanchion plug. Carefully insert the OTT assembly into the air side. 
and you wanna push that down all the way until it's fully seated. Then thread it in by hand as much as you can and then finally use your pin spanners to snug it down. Now that the OTT is installed, it would be a good time to insert a four millimeter Allen key into the OTT leg and turn it in both directions, making sure it functions as it should. It should turn pretty freely in both directions. Now that we're done with the lower portion of the uppers, we can move forward to the top. I put a couple paper towels on the top just to keep dirt from getting in. So before we move forward to the next step, you'll notice that my damper unit, the boot, is smashed in. It is not recommended to run it this way. A way you can fix this is to either replace it, or I'm going to show you a trick to just remove the clip from the top collar piece. And then from there, you can slide that collar up and then pull downward, releasing the boot. You can then apply some slick oleum to that white collar that retains the boot, go all the way around the perimeter, and then very carefully, if you work that boot into place, kind of letting some air seep in, and then just take your time working around the unit, you can actually get that boot to be symmetrical and fully inflated. Once you get into a good spot, just go ahead and slide it back up over that plastic piece, then drop the green collar back down over it to secure it, and then once everything looks good and filled and symmetrical all the way around, you can reinstall that metal clip on the top. Then just give the whole assembly a good wipe down before moving to the next step. If you decide or you need to fully replace the damper boot, I have a separate video that I'll be uploading to show you exactly how to do that thing from start to finish. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you'll see when that video posts. Now that that's done, we can install the bladder unit. You're gonna to wanna to start by filling a beaker up with Golden Spectro two and a half weight shock fluid oil to 70 cc's, which is the same as 70 millimeters. I just used a piece of electrical tape to mark 70 cc's, that way it's easier to see. Now you want to add the fluid to the rebound side and then you want to grab the rebound damper shaft at the bottom and cycle it about 10 to 15 times to ensure all the fluid is cycled through the system. Now carefully install the bladder unit back into the stanchion, thread it down by hand as much as you can and then use your 32 millimeter and a torque wrench and torque it down to 20 newton meters. Now that that's installed you want to fully open the low speed by turning it all the way clockwise till it stops and then remove the screw using a 2 millimeter allen key. Now you want to install your bleed cup. You can order these from DVO directly and there's also some hacks online for making your own. Then just fill it up with the 2.5 weight oil to the halfway point. Now you're going to want to keep cycling the damper leg until you get all the air out of the system. Just watch the top of the cup and make sure that you keep going until all the bubbles are removed. If the oil in the cup gets too low, just keep topping it off with the two and a half weight oil until you get all air out of the system and just keep pumping until you see a steady stream of oil coming out the top, in which case you can reinstall the screw. You just want to do this using a little bit of grease to hold the screw in place and do it under the oil to prevent air from getting in. Once the screw is secure and in place, you can use a syringe to extract whatever oil is left in the cup or just use a rag and just dab it all out of there. Now you can remove the cup and then just clean the excess oil off and just double check and make sure that that screw is secured all the way down. Now we can reinstall the compression adjuster. Make sure you have it set to the one setting as we fully open that compression needle in the step prior. Then go ahead and replace the screw on top using a two millimeter Allen key and check that everything functions as it should. Now this side is complete and we can move on to the air side. This side is much easier. We just wanna add five cc's of two and a half weight oil to the air chamber and then we can simply replace the cap and thread it in by hand as much as you can. And using the 32 millimeter socket and a torque wrench, torque it down to 20 Newton meters. Now using a shock pump, you wanna pump it up to about 50 PSI, just so it'll make installing it into the lowers easier in the next step as it'll push that leg all the way out. Now you can replace the air cap and the upper assembly is now complete. Go ahead and grab your lowers and you're gonna to wanna to start by removing the foam rings on the inner grooves just under the wiper sill and go ahead and discard those. Now grab a wrench and using the rounded side, pry both wiper sills Free. Whatever you use to pull those out, just make sure it doesn't have sharp edges on it as you don't want to scratch anything. Now that the foam rings and wiper seals are out of the way, grab some suspension cleaner and spray it into the lower legs and just take some clean shop towels and just work your way feeding them in to clean out the insides and also make sure to clean the seat where the wiper seals are going to go. Now that your lowers are nice and clean, go ahead and grab your Golden Spectro 7.5 weight oil and your new wiper seal kit. Remove the two foam rings and place them inside of the oil. You want to pre-soak those before install. One thing I noticed with this new wiper seal kit is it looks like they redesigned the foam rings. They're a lot thicker now and they fit into that groove almost perfectly. So it's a welcome upgrade. Now that the foam rings are soaking, grab your new wiper seals out of the package and you want to make sure both springs are attached. There should be one on the underside and one on top. And go ahead and slide that with the top of the wiper seal up towards the tool. 
and it'll kind of sit flush against the flange of that wiper seal. Now you're gonna to wanna to find a soft surface to set your lowers on. I just found an old gym mat laying around and then you can install the wiper seal tool with the wiper seal attached and use a soft mallet to hammer it down into place. You'll wanna make sure that it's sitting completely flush with the top of the lowers. If not, just reinsert the tool and give it a few more wax until it is fully seated. You're gonna repeat the process on the other side and when you're done, just inspect the wiper seals all the way around, making sure that they are sitting flat against the casting. Now would be a good time to ensure that your air release valves are working as they should also. They should have a springy fill to both sides. Now you wanna grab your pre-soaked foam rings and work them underneath the wiper seal into the groove. Just take your time pushing it all the way into the groove and when it's all set in place, just take a look around and make sure it's completely seated inside of the casting. Then simply just repeat the process on the other side with the other foam ring. Now with both foam rings installed, you're gonna to wanna to clean the inner lip of the wiper seal and then take some slick oleum and pack it into that groove on the wiper seal. You're gonna to wanna to work it all the way around the edges on both sides. This will ensure a nice smooth oscillation of the fork as it goes up and down. Now we can install our lowers to our uppers. Just give the stanchions one quick wipe down and then line your lowers up with the leg. Carefully guide them in and once you get it past the wiper seals, just pull it up till it stops. Now that the lowers are are installed you're going to want to start adding 25 cc's of oil to each side of the leg if you see the green inner shafts flush against the holes on the bottom you want to pull the top from the bottom apart slightly to make room for the oil I'm using a syringe in this process just to make it a little bit easier so I'm just doing uh, two with 10 cc's in it and then one with five cc's and again this amount is going into both legs whatever you use to put the oil in just make sure that you put that 25 cc's into both sides the OTT and the rebound side now that the the oils installed on both sides go ahead and push the lowers against the uppers so those inner green shafts are sitting flush against the casting now you can thread in the rebound adjuster on the rebound side and then the ott adjuster on the air side and once both of those foot nuts are tightened down my hand, torque those both to 10 newton meters. Once both foot nuts are installed, you're gonna to wanna to release the air from the air valve and then insert a five millimeter Allen key into the OTT to make sure it is functioning as it should and use your hand to check that the rebound is functioning as it should as well. And that's pretty much it guys, the 100 hour service is now complete. You can just go ahead and give your fork one final last wipe down, just removing any excess grease or oil on the outside so dirt doesn't cling to it. Then in this order, go ahead and set your OTT to your specified settings then your air pressure and then you can set your rebound adjuster and set your low speed and high speed compression to where you want them.